Okay, I am on, and my, perhaps shortly, my co, uh, co-host, me, co-host, will be joining me shortly. And he has uh, graciously uh, accepted to be a guinea pig for me. Um, my pen drawings that I did the other day, wherever they are, pen sketches, um, you know, I think maybe someone might want to buy one of these things and put them on their wall. And uh, Mitch, aka FX Technol, has suggested people might spend ready money on that. Uh, and they might. So I can either draw them randomly like this and just have fun and put them on my site and say, you know, add to shopping cart $1 million, or I can create something specifically for you and you and you and you and you. You, not you. Even if you paid me a million dollars, not you. And you know who you are. Um, no, uh, but I was thinking, you know, if if you were to buy this lovely thing from me, it's, you know, two and a half inches by 15 inches or so, to get a frame to fit this would be, you'd have to have it custom framed. And that's another $200 probably. Or you can go to the frame shoppy and buy the parts of these metal frames like this and frame it. But even that, um, you know, you then you have to p cut a piece of glass and that'll be another $100. No, it won't be that much, but it'll be many dollars, many, many dollars. Or, or I could make, do these drawings on eight by 10 inch pieces of paper and you go to the target shop near you and you buy a eight by 10 frame in many, many different styles to choose from and you're done. So how do you fit something like this on an eight by 10 frame? Well, we've all had the same trauma in taking a picture of your favorite pen. You've got your pen and you've got an acre of blank space over here and an anchor of acre of blank space over there. And you can tart it up by putting your gun as some people do or things you put in various orifices of your, body, of your body, as I did once, or you could put your dentures over here, or an apple, or an inkwell, or whatever. Or the other thing you can do is actually make it a dynamic image, more dynamic. It's harder for me, the artist, to do it, but let me just show you what I mean by that. Let's pretend, is this a pencil? Here's, I don't know if this is eight by 10, but we'll come up with various options of eight by 10 age. So you can have the pen be all by itself like this. You could do something like this, where you have the pen here and the cap here, filling up some of the space for those people that don't post. Maybe that's how you could do it. Another way to do it is to exaggerate the perspective. So you have the pen in perspective. Here's the cap back here. And here's the point up here, triumph nib point. And that sort of is dynamic. You could also 
do something like this, where you have the pen, maybe you, you aim it the other way. You have the pen cap be here. Let's draw Parker Duofold Senior. So you've got the pen cap here, you've got the barrel, got the section, you have the nib, and then you have a big piece of paper like this. And maybe the background is dark. And then you, you know, have the pen calligraphing something. Or what else can you do? You, I mean, there's there's ways of filling up uh, an eight by ten inch rectangle with something as linear as this thing. <laughs> Mitch just said it seems like you put weight more thought into this than I did. Well, Mitch, I have been doing illustrations for Penworld Magazine for ever, well, for years when I did it. And, you know, I've been thinking hard about how to make that work. And uh, sometimes, you know, doing a diagonal. I mean, if this was, you know, doing up and down like this means this is eight inches tall. If you do it like this, you've got now the hypotenuse of eight by 10 or 10 inches tall and the hypotenuse of eight by 10, whatever that is. And you can zoom in a little bit more, get a closer up view. So I've learned to rotate and zoom in is one way to do it, but also, again, to tilt it, you can zoom in really far and focus on the point. So uh, I tried to find <laughs> the pen for you. So anyway, this Mitch is being my guinea pig. And uh, so before I put him in the maze and I've already got him down to like 48% of his healthy weight. And there's a piece of cheese at the end of the maze. And bef But before I make him run through the maze to try to find that cheese, um, he's my guinea pig in this way where he has uh, allowed me to use his, a pen that he would like me to draw in a drawing. And uh, I know from experience and sending him pens that he really likes these fat triumph nib pens um the piston fill kind uh with the big band and so one of the things i'm doing here is i can personalize this for you and you and you and you and you, and you by putting your initials on the band, your very initials, or an initial, or something on the band. So let's first of all decide what 8 by 10 is. Where's my ruler? <sighs> no, yes. So I'm going to go a little bit outside. It's going to be a little smaller than that, a little smaller than that. So this is roughly 8 by 10, a little bigger. So now let's get a pencil that I can erase. So what is this? Paper mate pencil. Can you imagine I have such a thing? So, you know, even even if I were to exaggerate the the pen, it's still not going to really fit in the space all that well. But I'm, I'm going to do it this way anyway. 
it's sort of the now one thing about perspective is okay if i'm drawing this here's the pen from the side you've got a cap you've got a barrel barrel is roughly the same size as the cap that is about the same as that and then you've got the section of nib and that's about half this length so it looks like this from the side so how do i if i do this in perspective how do i did how do i divide that up well here's how that works in perspective Here's our point off the page, our vanishing point. Here's the front. The point of the pen will be here. The vanishing point is here. The cap of the pen is going to be here. So how do you, first of all, the middle of this pen is here. So how do I find the middle of the pen as I'm drawing it? Well, you do that by essentially putting this in a square, a rectangle, and by doing this this is where the middle is so that means the cap is way back here the cap band because you make an X in this rectangle the middle is there the middle is here so the cap is back here and then the middle of this is where the section meets the barrel See all the work I, that goes into making a silly thing like this? Then you've got the nib here. So let's try to remember this when I'm going over here. And again, I'm, I'm sort of winging it here, but you know, if, if, you, if you took the drawing that I made and gave it to an engineer and they told them to make this, it might end up being like this fat. So let's say I were to do this already, you know, what, what's happening to me is my, my chest is starting to um, con constrict. Is that the word? Because I'm, I'm having to measure and to draw and to be more careful than I was when I was drawing those other ones. So already I'm, I'm not having as much fun as I want to have on these things. So having fun is an important part of this. How does this work? Does this click or spin? Spins. Blah, blah, blah. Stripe, stripe, stripe. This is the nib. This is the th metal threading. Here's the stripes. Here's the cap. Here's that. So how does that look? There is a way to to take a blueprint of a house or a building and lay it out using a very complicated formula and you're able to then draw it in perspective. And there probably is a way to do that with a cylindrical object like this so that, um, I mean, I can do it perfectly. I suppose if I were to you know, divide, make a grid of all of the various important points on this pen, 
and put it into perspective and it would be fine. There was, I had, a, there was a postcard that I have somewhere in my house that shows a Great Lakes uh, steamer passenger ship from the Great Lakes. And it shows the, the bow here that it goes off in the distance there it shows the, the um, superstructure here and it has three funnels. So all of that looks fine. Follows the rules of perspective, except that if this were an actual boat, the back of the boat should be here at this point, but they drew it for some reason. The actual boat would be, would look like this. There'd be, you know, this 18 Olympic length swimming pools end to end on the back here on the poop deck. So here, this drawing might have in reality, rather than draw, it may not look like this, you know, with the cap band in the section, I may have, you know, drawn it incorrectly where, you know, the clip is maybe like this and there's way more of this happening. So that's the thing that, you know, it gets in the way of having fun, I'm trying to have fun. Right? Okay. Now, I said I was going to do this in brown ink. Well, I can't find my, I mean, I could probably find my brown ink somewhere, but should I try to find it? Oh, look. You might think this is tonic water, but this is actually brown. This is made of walnut ink. Now, is that going to fuck up a pen if I fill it? Probably. Let's just, let's take one more minute. Let's see if I can find, no, I don't need, I don't need that. No, I don't need this. Parker Mocha, does this even, this looks like it might work. Come on, ink. If I can find pelican sepia is always is better than this. Well, this has mold growing on the top. Mold's always good. Adds that little bit of this is kind of like the color. Okay, I'm going to use the moldy ink. <laughs> Effects Technol, I'm really, really sorry. Moldy ink. And I'm going to use a brush because I'm going to do some ink wash on this too. And again, the ink wash is something that may, in fact, maybe I'll, 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 I'll do it and maybe I won't in the real world or give that as an option. Let's just see what color ink this is. That looks pink. Can we find ink here that is a good color? No, no, no. Mocha better? I want pelican ink. I think actually effects techno, I'm just going to use black ink. 
I think black ink is just the way to make it happen. So where's my black ink? This is black. It's, you know, if, if, if people say I want this in dynamite, blah, blah, ink, you know, okay, send me a bottle of that with your check. You know, maybe I can do that. That way I'll get some. Okay, I'll have you join me in a minute. I just wanted to have people see how this is starts. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit rambunctious with this pen. Oh, what are your initials again? See, it's splattering ink already, which is M M J F. So the his initials are going to be right here on the cap band. M J F. Now, you'll notice, maybe you won't notice, that the that the engraver, <laughs> if if this were an actual pen that I sent to an engraver and it came back like this, I'd say, do it over again, because the J's in the middle, so the J should be lined up with the clip. But if I did that, you wouldn't see the M. And I want the clip to be lined up with the front of the nib. So there has to be a little tiny bit of artistic license in here. And is there a white dot on this thing? There is, but you barely see it behind that thing. Okay. So you see there's all sorts of trauma that goes into making art. Okay. So, but this is again making adding initials. I could I could have had your name written on the side here or initials on the side. It's an option for something like a I don't know. This pen, for example. Okay, so these are all going to be stripes. Then it comes down here to the stripe section. Drawing curves is not easy. We've got the, you see this, you see this come down. You see this go like that. There's these three curves. Again, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of I'm doing a little bit of uh, artistic licensing here. Here's the platinum part. Here's the gold part. And then I'll do the name part here, lifetime, etc. And I'm not going to write, I mean, this is a, where's my loop? Let's see what I'm doing here. Low battery. You're plugged in, for God fuck's sake. I don't understand. Okay, it says Schaefer on a curve, and it's a line, and it says lifetime straight across. And then it has little tiny words. And then you'd see life, uh, E would be here, T-I-M-E-L-I, Schaefer, S-H-E-A-F. F E R S anyway. Okay, so here it is filling up a good chunk of the thing here. So let's continue to draw it. 
Now, there are people in the world that would say, Mr. Gustafson, you did that wrong because there are actually 38 stripes total going around the barrel on that model, and you only drew 24 of them. And bite me. I mean, I'll, I'll, the, the idea is to make it resemble. You know, think of me as an impressionist rather than a than a realist. So the exciting part of, of drawing anything that's metal is the metal has the darkest dark and also the lightest light. So the darkest darks will be on the metal bits and the lightest lights will be on the metal bits. And even if even if a fountain pen is all black, chances are the reflection in the gold or the chrome will be reflections that will be darker. So we follow that same dark line here. And then we have another one here that gets in the way of the M. So some of the M is going to be uh, seen black on white, and some of it will be seen white, a white line on a black background, just because that's again how reflections work. Now, am I going to use ink wash with this? Will that be fun? Might be fun. I don't know yet. Figure this out. You have the step up, slight step up here, which I forgot to draw initially. There's the threaded section uh, part there. Go down to the nib. So this will be dark. Dark over here. Iridium there. Not much of a Waverly upturn on that one, though. You have to, well, I don't know whether I could, okay, $1 million, add to shopping cart. Um,
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase. Let this dry for a second. I'm gonna erase the pencil lines. Even though I kind of like the pencil lines, I mean, I I love seeing artwork as it's being made and seeing how how this works. Already, to me, the perspective is weird. It seems like the nib part of it should be longer than it is. Um, just in my, just looking at it here, but again. Um, we'll see. The thing is, I'm I'm a little unsure about whether I want to, like in these pens I did earlier with the these things I added, I got out my ink wash brush and I dissolved the um, ink that was in it. And it was sort of neat to see that added amount of depth, I guess, and sort of fun. Um, so what I might do is stop this because I'm almost done with my battery power here anyway. Stop this one and then recharge it, take a picture of what it is now, and then add the ink wash and see what happens. This is this would not, be, if I was done, if this was only to be drawn in pen and ink without an ink wash, I, pr I have more that I would do, but um, I'll probably end up doing that before uh, adding the ink wash and take a picture of that. I want to do the, the name here. Seven percent. Let me let me see if I can find something here. Just show you what it would look like. Fuck me. Don't go away. So here is a frame that has one of my diploma people in it. And let's see what it would look like with your pen in it. Just borrow this. Look at that. Okay, can I make this work? <laughs> can you see from the, let's just lift this up? Not to drop the iPad. Ta da! So, you know, this is a, a bigger frame than 8x10, but the map is for an 8x10 image. And 8x10 is a standard frame that you can get almost anywhere. 
get rid of target. Five by seven is another one, another size. I, I might have made it a little bit smaller in there so it floats a little tiny bit more, but this is something that, you know, this is the first guinea pig thing. So, you know, someone might say that little line that sticks out, it's like a little hair follicle of the of the fiber of the paper got caught in the time. Well, that's what happens. Hair follicle, little follicles like that happen. Also, you know, the little fringy bits here that go off outside the lines that would, that might bother someone might bother that person or this person. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother you, Mitch. So anyway, I'm going to turn this off now. This is pen portrait number one. But see something like this, eight by 10, however it's finished, whether it be line work like this or whether it be more, I'll do another one taking this pen and sort of doing a riff on it, maybe come up with an abstract design like a cubist version of this pen. Um, there's all sorts of fun ways to, to make drawings be interesting. So anyway, I'll stop this now. We'll be back later. Bye.